the first I knew about it, the, just re rewinding, was um, well, I was writing a cello concerto for Julian Lloyd Webber, and the phone went, and it, and it was Matt, our manager, and he said, uh, "You better sit down." Uh, he said, "Poor Raven's died," and it, it took a, a good half an hour for it to sink in, and I had this commission to write this. Um, cello concerto which I stopped right there and then and um, I uh, I wrote um, a funeral oration for Raven starting at that moment and I cried for three days just writing it and uh, and then of course we uh, we all headed over to Switzerland to Geneva where the funeral was going to be held now I have to point this out. Um, in 1983, the whole band moved to Geneva, and this was our kind of neutral ground. We have places in in the world that, if we need to go to ground, it's one phone call and we're there. And we have a house in Geneva where we all used to live, where we we can often go to ground. And we've got a place in South America, New Zealand, and and we knew that. Paul was wanting to go to ground. He'd given a distress signal already. And uh, anyway, what's deeply comforting is that he made it back to Geneva, uh, which was a is a deeply special place for a Killinger where we all leave, live together. And and I know that I traced all Raven's last movements and over the last three days before he passed. And he went to the house where we all lived, where I live now in Geneva. And um, and the bar, there was one cafe bar, this anarchist bar that Raven used to hang out in, and Joe Strummer as well in Geneva. And he spent a lot of time there in the last three days before he died. <coughs> and of course, um, he knew he was going to die six months before. This is what people aren't aware of. He knew almost to the day he was going to die. And I've collected all the SMSs and... Um, notes which he was uncharacteristically emotional contacting everybody telling them how much he loved them before he passed and he so he so he knew he was going uh, uh, we'll come to that anyway um so as he died in uh, just over the border geneva's like five the border's five minutes there into france he died just at the hotel he was staying at it was just over the border and he died there so um the funeral the, the was the actual um, cremation funeral, which is only half an hour long, was was held there, and um, I turned up late there, and the big Paul was outside, and the whole crowd of people were outside, and um, <coughs> with regards to the sort of the original lineup, nothing like, was ever spoken about that we're going to get together, but it was assumed, it was everybody automatically assumed, and I believe the line. That called us all together was a line from Of Death in Nietzsche's Also Sprach Zarathustra. And it went something to the effect of When a great man dies, men put aside their differences and make solemn vows. And this line was read out at, at the funeral, the half hour funeral of the cremation, which is a very distressing affair because all Raven's children were there and especially the little ones seeing the coffin going in and everything it was very distressing so anyway um, we all ran back to Geneva after this horrible cremation and went to straight to Raven's anarchist bar uh, and uh, where we felt, felt a lot more at home and um, everybody started drinking and um, smoking and everything else and and um, I became aware of uh, everybody taking pictures of Big Paul and Geordie and myself and wanting to get pictures of us together and uh, and Raven had always said to me Jazz if you get the chance of doing the original line up do it so it, it felt like it was kind of the whole thing was blessed by him I felt his presence with with me um, uh, at, at at this time, I felt him in the room, his presence in the room, um, and uh, <coughs> I talked a lot about death with Raven, 
we used to have this phrase, I would go, you go hurtling a thousand miles an hour towards death and together we'd both go grinning as we go. <laughs> you know what this is used to say? Because like death was always around the corner and, and people were always passing but I, I didn't kind of foresee the youngest of us going. Um, but um, six months before Paul passed, he had a dream in which he saw all of his exes at his funeral. And then his girlfriend's sister had the same dream almost three days later. than So, and Paul knows how to interpret dreams and um, is no stranger to th these sciences. And um, then confessed to one of his exes that he felt he was going to die soon. And that now, prior to this, over the last six months, Raven could never lie flat on a bed because he'd get heart palpitations, you see. So, so he kind of knew that, um, that his, his ticker, his heart, was um, something that was strange because every time he lied flat, it would race. And so he used to, to sleep like like uh, sitting up all the time in the tour bus for the last six, maybe the last eight years. I, I knew him. He'd always, you'd see him in the morning with his coat pulled up like this. He'd never sleep in a bunk or in the bed. He'd go, get the kettle on, Coleman. And, uh, you know, in, and that's how they found him when he passed, to sitting upright in the chair, you know. And, uh, oh, man, I cried. I cried. It was harder than my own father passing. I'm still not completely over it. It's still, you know, it, it's still there very much for us. But one of the things I feel apart from him making it back to Geneva look I can say this now because it doesn't matter anymore Raves was on his second false passport and they busted him here and so he ran to South America and headed to Geneva right and, that, and of course it was a different identity so Paul Raven didn't exist in England anymore been taken off the computer we couldn't take his body back home huh huh yeah, yeah so, uh, so it was a very, very interesting sort of situation, but um, yeah, it was it, it was particularly hard, the, the passing. I realised that I spent more time with him than his own family and anybody else on planet Earth, and um, and uh, I, I stood stand by him. Uh, Raven was a gang member as well, and so. It, I know that he was suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome because his best mate had been shot to the head in front of him. And that's, that happened this decade. Uh, so he, he had a lot of shaking up. And, uh, you know, we've always done a bit of marijuana in our time, but we've never done hard drugs. But uh, Raven used to flirt with these things, and I don't suppose his heart took well to it. Um, doing the ministry tour and um, <laughs> the rest of it, you know. And, and there we are, really. There we are. But we're here now. And I, I don't really, you know, I say to anyone who has got any um, <laughs> doubt about uh, life after death to read Everett's theorem on parallel universes or Schrodinger's cat, the dead and alive cat. So in the distant future, Raven's not even dead yet you know and so he's conscious now as we speak 